blood and righteousness I did not trust the sweetest friend But holy trust in Jesus' name Christ alone, cornerstone Weak made strong in the Savior's love Through the storm He is Lord Lord of all When darkness seems To hide His face I rest on His unchanging shall come with trumpet sounds Oh may I then in him be found Dressed in his righteousness alone For to stand before the throne Christ alone Stone, weak, made strong in the Savior's love, and through the storm. Cross 
Peace keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Welcome to this online service for St Margaret's and St Mary's. I hope you've been finding these services helpful during this time. We're still really missing you guys. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you are for us and that you have the power to change both lives and situations. And I pray that you would use this service powerfully to speak to each person watching. Amen. Our reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, starting at verse 12. Paul says, now when I went to Troas to preach the gospel of Christ and found that the Lord had opened a door for me, I still had no peace of mind because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I said goodbye to them and went on to Macedonia. But thanks be to God who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we are an aroma that brings death, to the other an aroma that brings life. And who is equal to such a task? Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ we speak before God with sincerity as those sent from God. Well, it's great to welcome you to St Margaret Lothbrook, uh, wherever you are, you are at the moment when you're watching this. Uh, this is a sign that one day we'll be back here in this church. Uh, thank you, Cliff, for your welcome from St Mary Woolnoff uh, and uh, Sophie for reading uh, those verses from 2 Corinthians chapter 2. I can't help feeling rather embarrassed now uh, at admitting that until the last week I knew comparatively little about Marcus Rashford. Given his achievements and the profile that he has as a professional footballer, I know that is pretty unimpressive. And there'll be lots of you who'll text me or email me and say, what planet do you live on? But, you know, that's just life sometimes. But as I listened to, uh, to a programme about him very early on Sunday morning, I was impressed by his commitment to those who'd helped him over the years, whether family or friends or teachers. He clearly values still all those relationships recognize him that they've helped him make it make him the person he actually is and as we re, as we heard read to us this extract from paul's second letter to those christians in first century corinth we glimpse some of the people who really mattered to the apostle paul people he clearly valued enormously. That's clear from verse 12. He travelled to Troas and found lots of people there who wanted to know more about the Lord Jesus Christ. For Paul this was the ideal opportunity and situation and he threw himself into life there preaching and teaching and meeting up with people even though he clearly had other things on his mind. For some time before, he'd written an open letter to the Christians in the church in Corinth, challenging them about their apparently relaxed attitude to someone in the church there who was unashamedly living a blatantly sinful life. Paul had been surprisingly direct even for him he couldn't actually, though, have been otherwise. Even though he was acutely aware that his letter could have damaged or even destroyed the relationships that he had with those Corinthian Christians, he still wrote directly to them. 
their friendship matter to Paul. And even as he seized all the opportunities that God had made available to him in Troas, he was desperate to know how those Corinthians had reacted to his letter. So desperate that he left Troas earlier, early, travelled to Macedonia, hoping to meet his colleague Titus on his way back from Corinth. Of course, I said Paul could easily have compromised, easily not have been quite so direct, played down the importance of the issue. But in the verses that followed, he explained why he couldn't possibly have done that. He uses an illustration, first of all, uh, that would have been understood instinctively by his contemporaries, but refers to a practice that's completely alien to us. Using the example of a victory parade to honour the return to Rome of a successful general, Paul highlights one aspect of all he was learning about being a Christian. For Paul, the fact that he was a Christian was a sign of the victory that Jesus had won by his death on the cross. A victory that meant that now Jesus set the agenda in Paul's life, even if that sometimes meant the life was a little awkward. Paul's experience, his wrestling with this situation, reminds us how we as Christians sometimes have to make what can seem very costly decisions. We make choices when we have to put what Jesus wants, first of all, and risk an awkwardness with those who matter to us, those whose friendship we value. It takes real trust to make the right choice at times like that. In the end, of course, those Corinthian Christians did exactly what Paul had asked them to do. He was so anxious, but they responded so quickly. It was a win-win all round. But today, the Lord Jesus Christ wants to help us to be ready for those times when, like Paul, we are faced with difficult choices. Perhaps some of us are facing difficult choices at the moment, knowing what Jesus wants us to do, but hesitating all the same because we can see all the hassle that will come from making that choice. Paul's example encourages us. Don't compromise and trust that Jesus is in charge. surrounding me let it break at your name still call the sea to still the rage you meet still every way at your name and Jesus Jesus cause you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus, cause you silence figure And Jesus, Jesus, cause you make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus Breathe, call these bones to live Call these lungs to sing once again Jesus, Jesus, 
Till you 